All right, so this is fifth grade, module five, lesson 20, and we're beginning to wrap up our classification of two-dimensional quadrilaterals. We've got all of our pieces, we rectangles, trapezoids, parallelograms, rhombus, kites, all these figures, and now we have to try and understand how they all relate to each other, and essentially we call that the hierarchy based on their properties. And uh, so that's what this lesson is all about, is just trying to give students the opportunity to experience all of these figures together and, and understand how they relate to each other using phrases like uh, a square is always a, and then you have to come up with some other phrase. A square is always a rectangle, or a square is always a quadrilateral. And uh, that's the idea, is we want students to be able to recognize how figures are related to one another. So let's get started on this. So I'm sharing this. Uh, parents, this, this graph graphic organizer right here is found in the teacher edition. You're welcome to go to uh, various websites and download the teacher edition for this module because they're available for free. That's the law. And uh, down and look at this graphic organizer. But the idea uh, for this parents and teachers is to help students uh, understand how a square is related to the rhombus, how a square is related to the kite, or how a square is related to rectangles, and vice versa. So you can see that quadrilaterals being out here are the most general, and then as we move in, we get more and more specific, so that kites are kind of this funky figure that kind of cut across a variety of, of classifications, but the square you could see is probably the most specific because it's right in here. It's the most nested inside uh, figure. So teachers or parents, what you could do is you could say, well, what is this? And your, your students might say, well, it's a rectangle. And you'd say, okay, where would it go? Oh, it goes right here. And then you could get another one. What is this? And have your students go, oh, that's a parallelogram. And where would a parallelogram go? Well, it would go here. Well, we can't put it here because it's not a rectangle, so we've got to squeeze it in right here. Whoa! Although, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like that it might also be, um, a, let's see, a, it might be a rhombus. I don't know. Is that a rhombus? A rhombus means all four sides have to be equal. Uh, I don't think these two sides are quite equal. So I'm going to stick with my initial idea of that is a parallelogram. So where does a parallelogram go? Well, that parallelogram has to squeeze in. I could put it right there. There. So that's where the parallelogram goes. And the idea is you just take a shape. What is this? Well, that's kind of clearly quadrilateral because there are no 90 degree angles. None of the sides are the same no parallel lines, so we're going to put it way up here, outside. And the idea is you just let your students, this looks like a trapezoid, and put it where it goes. And let your kids classify these figures so that they can explore the relationships. Now, once you have your figures here, you can see that a rectangle is always a parallelogram because the rectangle is inside the parallelogram. And you could say that a parallelogram is always a trapezoid because the parallelogram figure is inside the trapezoid. So that's how you can make uh, statements, uh, like using the words always. So this look, looks pretty funky, and I'm not, I'm not going to do every single problem here. But the idea is to help students go through this flow chart and put the name of the resulting figure in each of these boxes. So we're going to start with a thing that's a quadrilateral. Yes. Now we're going to go here. Does it have? Now they should put the phrase, does it have? Uh, and then put a question mark because the answer is going to be either yes or no. And you can't have a yes or no unless this is a question. So this says, does it have four right angles? And if the answer is yes, you go over here. And then you say, does it have four sides of equal length? And if the answer is yes, that means it has four right angles and it has four sides that are equal length. 
that means it is a square. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing. Now we're except we're going to have to try and end up here. So this says, is it a quadrilateral? Yes. Does it have four right angles? Yes. Does it have four sides of equal length? No. Ah, so it's got four angles, four right angles, but they're not equal sides. The sides are not all equal. Well, that makes it a rectangle. And really, if we wanted to, we could draw a picture of that because to prove it, right? So our proof here is a square looks like this because it's got four right angles, four equal sides. And then down here, it's a rectangle. Why? Because it has four right angles, but the four sides are not all equal length. And you get the idea. So how would we get down here? Well, is it a quadrilateral? Yes. Does it have four right angles? No. Are the two sets of opposite angles the same? And if the answer is yes, you go over here. Yes. Mm, so the opposite angles are the same. Uh, are the four sides equal? Yes. Okay, now what is that? Well, we have to draw a figure that doesn't have right angles, but the opposite angles are equal and the four sides are the same. So that's going to look like, like this. So the sides are the same length, but we can see that this angle is equal to this angle, and then we can see that this angle is equal to this angle. What figure did I just create? Well, I just created a rhombus. And that's how you go through this process. So I'm not going to finish the rest of these. The idea is just try and use these as your descriptions of what your picture should look like. I recommend drawing the picture even though it doesn't say so up here. And then once you look at your picture, now you can identify what that figure is. And the last slide for this video is we are given a picture and we are told that this picture right here is a square because it says so right there. So this figure is a square. It has an area of 79 centimeters squared. So right off the top, well, let's leave it there for a second. And then it says an RM, this little line segment right here from the center to the corner right here is 4.9 five centimeters squared. All right, and then it says, find the measurements using what you know about the properties of squares. So basically, we have all these missing values about this figure that we want to fill in. But I'm going to jump in, and without even looking at this right now, I'm just going to go say, well, it's a square. Its area is 49 centimeters squared. So automatically, that tells us that this length right here is 7 centimeters and this length here is 7 centimeters because we know 7 times 7 is 49. So I'm filling that in right off the top of my, off the top of the, my head because uh, it's just something I know. I don't know if we were supposed to figure that out. I just thought I'd put it in anyway because it's kind of interesting. So now let's keep looking. Now it says, what is RS? Well, where is RS? <laughs> oh, here, RS is this thing. Well, if this piece is 4.95, that means this piece right here is also 4.95. That means RS is going to be 4.95 plus another 4.95, or I could have used multiplication. And I get 9.9. .9. So RS is 9.9 .9 centimeters. Now how about QE? Where's QE? Well, QE is right here. Well, we know in a square, those diagonals are supposed to be the same. Same length. This entire diagonal and this entire diagonal. Now what's the perimeter? Well, we know 
if this is 7, and this is 7, and this is 7, and this is 7, so now we have to add up 4 7s. So 7 times 4 equals 28. So we know that the perimeter is 28. And then the last couple ones are about angles. QRE. Well, here's QRE. QRE. And what is that angle? Well, that's a 90 degree angle because right here is a perfect 90 degree angle. And then the last one, RMQ. Well, where R? Here's RMQ. RMQ. So they're asking us, what is this angle right here? And it is also, you can even kind of see it, it sort of looks like, because it is, a 90 degree angle. And that wraps up a fun one where we're kind of putting together all of these two-dimensional figures and understanding how they're related to one another. That is... 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 20.